Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Jason Priestess, Chris Lauterbach from 11 Warriors here with a brand new thing called the 11 Warriors Show. Really, really creative name, Chris. I like what we did think with that. Of that. Think of that by yourself. <laughs> we did. We did. It uh, took a lot of, a lot of brainstorming, but uh, we're here this time last week or, you know, nearabouts this time last week. We were on the radio at 97.1 The Fan. Uh, ended a five-year run over there. Had a blast. The nicest people really enjoyed our time there. Um, but you know, wanted to do something a little different and that's why we're here, uh, talking to you on this Wednesday morning and, and want to thank you for tuning in and not quite sure where we're going to take this yet. I don't think, uh, got some ideas, but just wanted to get on here and, and chat and, uh, you know, talk about America's favorite college football team, the Ohio state Buckeyes. And you know what, this year we're going to be talking a lot about the America's favorite college basketball team as well, because, uh, Holtman's got them cooking a little bit right now. Yeah, yeah, it's got them cooking in November. Need to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, fun start. Um, well, let's get cranking, man. The first thing I want to talk about is the CFP rankings that came out last night and where we are with those. Uh, Bucks fell to number six. Uh, the CFP committee kept them ahead of Texas and Alabama, which is good to see because there's still, you know, still a window of this team might have a shot of getting in. Um, what do you think about the, the sixth spot for them there? Yeah, I think it's fair. I think that's where they, you know, where they should be. Um, well, not surprised. That's where they landed. We saw in the polls, you know, the, the polls that don't matter, they were six in that one as well. And I, I think right now, yeah, with Oregon right in front of them, uh, with those, you know, undefeateds in front of them, I, you know, I could buy that right now. I think you can make a case for, you know, it, it depends on if you value a close loss or you value, you know, quality wins kind of thing. But I, as a Buckeye fan, I can't sit here and cry too much about being number six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they need some things to happen and, and you know, let's start here. Do you want, as a fan, do you want Ohio state into the CFP? Hell yes. It drives me nuts when people say they don't want a shot at that. Right. Like, right. I don't care how mad you are about what just happened or how confident you are that they would, they would win. Um, would you rather have a chance if you think it would be some huge upset? Would you rather pull a huge upset in a game of consequence? Or would you rather play an exhibition uh, against Louisville or whoever it may be that really doesn't, you know, bring a lot of value or interest or excitement? To me, it's a no brainer. Even if that meant losing again. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Like the Georgia game lost, but I was off up off my couch caring about what the outcome well, you always care but you know and it, like you're vested right like some exhibition game against louisville and a game that really only ohio state and whoever they're playing would care about like why would you settle for that i guess i i i know you i know you're firmly in that same camp yeah yeah absolutely i mean i thought people would learn their lesson last year like losing to michigan yeah. stinks but it doesn't mean that you're yeah. a bad team right we saw that last year and, and yet you still saw some people on x or twitter or whatever they're calling these days about you know, talking about, oh, we don't, we don't deserve it. We get annihilated by every team in the top 40. Right. There's no chance. It's like, come on, bro. Um, but yeah, yeah, give them a shot, man. That, that Peach Bowl was a lot of fun last year and they came, you know, three points away from honestly winning a national title. So just, just give them a shot. Uh, Michigan, do you think they are, we're going to talk about that game in a minute, but do you think Michigan's going to make some noise in the CFP? I think they certainly have a chance. I mean, the only team, and anybody can beat anybody, but I feel like Georgia is still probably the most complete team that I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I think uh, Michigan would certainly have a great chance against a Florida State, um, you know, but would they, you know, how would they do against a Georgia? I guess, I guess we, I hope we get the chance to see, and I hope Georgia smokes them. I'm not, you know, I'm not right. chanting Big Ten during that game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I can see them winning a game. I don't know that I think that they, uh, you know, will win a title, but – Begrudgingly, you got you got to tip your cap. They did what they needed to do on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think once you get to this level, uh, the CFP land, the, all the teams are pretty good. Um, some years more so than others, but you know, there's also Georgia as good as they've been. They're not like the juggernaut team that you have every now and then in college football that everyone else is like. We don't want to play them at all. They're really good. They're the one seed. They're going to get the one spot. They're three time defending yeah. champs going for number yeah. three, I guess. Um, I would but, love to but, see the a Pac-10, you know, Pac-12 matchup. Like, I would like to see an Oregon or a Washington against. Because normally, you know, like I feel like when Ohio State's played in those games, you feel like you're just, you know, you're probably going to just out physical that team mm -hmm. when you need to. And knowing that Michigan kind of hangs their hat on that, I would like to see. I'd like to see that, you know, a matchup like that against Washington or Oregon, right? If Michigan were, were to play one of them, I think that would be an interesting, uh, be a very interesting matchup, just because of maybe the, the just the, the differing styles. I think Michigan can make some noise in the CFP, but you're right. They do run into teams like that every now and then. They're like, this is something we've never seen before, you know, like, cause they're so, <laughs> they're built to win one game a year right now, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's, yeah. 
that's that late November game, whereas Ohio State's built to win a few different styles of games. But, uh, you know, maybe this is the year they crack through. Obviously, Georgia should be one if they beat Bama in the SEC championship game. Michigan will be two if they beat Iowa. And then, you you know, you have some spots up for grabs. You have, I think two teams are definitely in. Um, and then you got Washington, Florida State, Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, and Alabama kind of hanging around. Uh, if Georgia beats Alabama this weekend, then they're out. If Alabama beats Georgia, then you might have two SEC teams in the field. Right. And, you know, yeah. that would be, a, that'd be a, a problem for Ohio State fans wanting to get in. Florida State's got Louisville, final game. They don't have their quarterback, but, man, their backup played decently against the Gators, right? Yeah, yeah, he doesn't doesn't look uh, doesn't look terrible. I'm not sure how much folks are believers in just the the ACC and the strength, but it's interesting. I mean, if if Florida State were to um, win that game, uh, is there any way they're out? I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think you can leave an undefeated Power Five conference champ out right, in the playoff. Right. I think even if the quarterback even yeah. if they their star quarterbacks hurt, you know, I, I just don't think you can do it. I mean. Ohio State got in with a third stringer, so I mean, there's kind of some precedent already. Yeah, that, yeah know, there is. Do, do you make anything of the statements uh, that that Boo said on uh, on Tuesday night about you know kind of clarifying about you know that it's, it's the four best, not the four most deserving? That kind of mean yeah. you know you can take that a bunch of different ways. It's kind of like, hey, does conference championship mean as much if they're not one of the four be. best? Or you know, if Florida State wins that game with the you know that quarterback gets hurt, like you'd have to think that would come into the mix for sure. But assuming that doesn't happen and they're just rolling with their backup and win you feel like florida state's in yeah yeah i do i do uh you know each committee's their own committee though and maybe they want to shape things differently and say we will you know, it's certainly not the u.s court system they don't have to stick to precedent <laughs> they can make their own precedent when they want to but uh oregon and washington will play that'll be a heck of a game friday night um and, and right there i think you need washington winning that game to kind of lock a spot because if oregon wins mm -hmm. and oh my goodness you've got a case for maybe two pac 12 teams yeah, to get in yeah yeah Texas has got Oklahoma State. Ohio State fans would need Texas to lose. Are you – is Mike Gundy, has he, has he got some man in him for this one? Or is well, Gundy definitely Texas does. Control? He definitely does. That and Texas is still Texas. I mean, they could you know, they could choke on one of these games for sure. Um, I, I, don't, I haven't even seen what the spread is. I mean, you, you got to believe, obviously, Texas is a favorite. But, no, I don't, I don't think that's a layup. I mean, and, you know, the fact is we've talked about it on the show, the radio show, multiple times this year, but there's just been a lack of chaos. So it, it's been very chalky all year long. Mm -hmm. So is this, you know, a situation where maybe this weekend will be the crazy one, you know, one finally comes or will it just be, you know, kind of a continuation of what we've seen where, you know, upsets have been, you know, pretty, pretty hard to come by. Um, so right. yeah, you know, cross your fingers. You're a Buckeye fan that, Hey, maybe, maybe we are due, right. It definitely feels like we're due for some chaos. Will it pan out this year or not? We'll we'll find out here in a handful of days. Well, they can expect tons of uh, TV sets in Ohio tuned into random conference title games. Absolutely, that have no otherwise, no otherwise, no impact in their lives. Uh, <laughs> I, st I still think what the, didn't the Pac-12 game set records last year for a Pac-12 game because Ohio turned out to watch. Utah yeah, and, yeah, the uh, Columbus USC. market. Like, yeah. It was like the highest watch, <laughs> the most watched Pac-12 championship game ever, ever because Ohio tuned in. So that's what we do. We watch we watch TV really well. Um, the game, man. We're a few days removed from the 30 to 24 heartbreak in Ann Arbor, and it's uh, the third straight loss for Ryan Day. Um, you know, he felt the sting of it. He was very candid in his post game. It was a tough one, man. Like, you know, we'd been so spoiled for a long time around here beating Michigan like clockwork that, man, three games now, that's some big time adversity. And it's, you know, there, some fans are probably not handling it too well. Uh, online, we'll talk about that in a minute. But <laughs> to me, man, it came down to you know a couple of things, man. Like uh, Sharon Moore was way more aggressive than Ryan Day was. I think Ryan called a really good game. I just think he could have been and should have been more aggressive. Maybe even had a trick or two up his sleeve for a game like this. Yeah, uh, other Ohio State coaches, coaches have been really good about that. Uh, that's one aspect that the aggressiveness. The other one was special teams. And you know, this is a game where you've got to be good in the special teams and Tressel used to preach it. And we'd all roll our eyes and like, okay, grandpa, whatever, you know, but he was right, man. And another thing Tressel talked about was the team that makes the fewest mistakes. And it's so cliche. So cliche. You're like, yeah, of course, whatever. I see that two turnovers. Michigan had Most cliches are true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. I, I take a little bit of exception of like, I think, I don't think Day called a terrible game, but I don't know that you can say he called a great game, but then also say he was like super conservative. Um, yeah, the, the, at a game like this where it's a six point difference and it really comes down to splitting here. Not to think we said too literally, but to to me, I don't right, know if yeah. you can have it both ways there, right? Of like, 
You can't not go for it on a couple third downs. You can't have zero wrinkles for the game. If your opponent does those same things right. and actually executes them, then I then I don't mm-hmm. know that you can say uh, you know if that if he called a great game, then more called like the greatest game kind of thing, right? Because I feel like they they were kind of a step ahead. But special team right. stuff, definitely agree with. And you know, it's not like Saturday's the first time that popped up. I'm not, I'm not one to sit here and call for heads and that kind of thing, but this is not a new problem. Um, it was a little mm-hmm. bit different Saturday in that it was truly player execution type stuff. You'd have like, you know, as many illegal formations and, oh, we're running a punt or a fake, but nobody else knows we're running a fake. Uh, you know, the coaches don't know we're running a fake, that kind of goofy stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, running the clock down to kick a 52-yarder when fielding's longest was 47 was, you know, a little odd. That was tough. Um, but, you know, he kicked the – he did – he nailed the 52-yarder when it didn't count. I'm like, do not kick that ball, you know. Like, after he yeah. made it, it's almost like, all right, go for it. But it's too late yeah. then because you've run, you've run the clock down. But um, the punts were also brutal, uh, you know. 34 and 33 yard punts or whatever they were. Michigan didn't directly yeah. score following those possessions, but they just fed into kind of that field position battle. And of course they had, and you're not flipping it. You're not flipping it, but you're deep. not flipping right. it. You're, yeah. not, you're not flipping it, but you're gaining like, you know, yeah. eight here, 10 here. Right. And that's well, it, up, and it starts to yeah, move the field matters. a little. It's not Absolutely. a complete flip in one play, but yep. Yep. yeah. Yeah. And it's, the turnovers, uh, like you mentioned, I mean, you can't, a game like that, especially on the road, you can't lose the turnover, but you know, losing the turnover battle is one thing, but turning the ball over at your own seven yard, like that you can't do, right? Like you just, you cannot do Mm -hmm. that. And to do that that early, you're kind of playing catch up the whole time. Yeah. They tied it up there at 17 for basically the equivalent of one possession, but you're just kind of on your heels the rest of the game. And I think that fed into a little bit of, you know, maybe tightness from the team, from the coach. Right. Yeah. I, I, I firmly believe players key off their, the mood of their coach. Cause for Coop all those years ago, he was always like yeah. biting his nails on the yeah, sideline. Nervous. You're like, Oh man, yeah. we're, we're going to lose. He's, he's got old dudes out here biting his knuckles down, man. We're going to get stomped. Uh, speaking of Coop, man, a lot after the game, a lot of Buckeye fans want people fired. They want uh, Ryan day fired. They want Kyle McCord fired. Uh, <laughs> if he could be fired, <laughs> uh, there's, you know, obviously Parker Fleming, the special teams coach has taken heat a lot of the season. Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, you know, Michigan had a monster drive in that second half, two, two pretty good drives, honestly. And, and, um, you know, not, not, uh, not Gene Smith. He's, he's retiring. So they're smartly not calling for his head. He did get into a little sideline scuffle. That was pretty fun to watch. Love seeing some fire out of him and, uh, you know, a little, little word you can't say to kids around kids, uh, you know, (laughs) but, uh, everyone's got a few of those in them. Uh, Dado, man, the, the thing that kills me, and this is like, you know, people are like, oh, he's not from Ohio. He doesn't want it. Like, he wants it. Like, he's devastated right now. Like, he really gets it. He's gone and he will clean house on his staff, or not clean house, but he'll make moves on his staff to bring other guys in that that might get the game better than 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 mm-hmm. than, or at least have a better approach for the game. Yeah, you he's know? proven that. Yeah. He, he, yeah, you know, he's like, hey, my defense isn't cooking. That's why I lost the game. Let me upgrade my defense. And he'll do things like that. So, the thing that kills me though is the people that are saying he's John Cooper two point because the first thing when I hear that it was like, you're the same people that like spent five weeks saying the 21 and 22 Michigan games didn't count because Connor Stallions was cheating. Mm -hmm. And now you're like, day's got to go because he's 0 and three. It's like, they have to kind of decide was day one and one against Michigan. Is he one and three against Michigan with three straight losses? What's the answer there? That kind of drives me nuts a little bit. I do think day's got a, got a Michigan problem. And I think he knows he has a Michigan problem and you know, he's paid a lot of money to, to win that game. And, um, you know, that certainly exists, right? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think it does. I, I'm with you though. I don't think that he should be, you know, I definitely don't think he should be fired right now. Um, I think you're going to have a, a tough time getting a replacement to come in here. If, if, you know, you're going to fire someone after 56 and seven, um, particularly if you do believe cheating had anything to do with a couple of those games to your mm-hmm. point. So yeah, I will not say John Cooper. I think it's, it's more of one, you're one, you're one and three, right? I mean, that is the record. It's also just kind of how those have unfolded, right? Where it just, just doesn't feel good. Right. When you just feel like, mm-hmm. man, did you, you know, whether there are times where you played not to lose, you weren't aggressive, you're in your own head. I mean, that's happened a couple of different years, che- cheating or not. Right. There's been some, some stuff where you just feel like high state's just a little tight in these games or they're overthinking or, you know, like that kind of stuff playing against really good teams though. I mean, these are three of the best Michigan teams that, you know, they fielded in, in quite a long time. But um, to me, it's, it's the Michigan stuff, but it's also, if you want to be, I think most people consider Ohio state to be a top three, top four program in the country. 
yeah, one and three versus Michigan doesn't feel good, but one and six versus a top five doesn't feel good. You're not losing those, you know, those games like Urban did, one to Iowa or one to Purdue, where you're, you know, you're getting blown out in some games that really, you know, should never happen. 56 and seven or whatever it is, is is a hell of a record. I do think there's a lot of built in wins in that 56 that you should absolutely win. And it comes down to those matchup games. And I think there's been times, Georgia, they looked great. At the end of the day, though, it was, it was still a loss, right? So just got to figure out how to swing the pendulum. Hold on, man. You're not going to go seven and oh, but. No, no, one no and six. You can't do either. I'll get us back a little bit here too, because the other thing with the Cooper comparison that drives me absolutely nuts is Cooper ninety five and ninety six of the years he lost eleven and zero teams to Michigan upsets mm-hmm. in both games, right? Mm-hmm. Michigan both those seasons was eight and four, right. or four. I think one year they're nine and four, four lost teams. Okay, Day's getting a completely different style of team than Cooper lost to. Yeah, like yeah. you touched on, these are three of the four best michigan teams the last 25 years i'll throw oh six in that mix okay mm-hmm. three of the four best hands down michigan yeah teams i think it's last yeah i definitely years. think that's fair uh day also you know is playing a team that's teams are you know trestle did some good work here right he put the fence up and he flipped the script the first three times trestle played michigan those michigan teams entered the game with two losses only twice in the 10 michigan meetings that trestle had where they did they have one or fewer loss they were unbeaten in 06 and mm-hmm. they had one loss in another season. You know, there were six loss Michigan teams he faced. And in Urban, a little bit of the same, man. He played some really bad Michigan teams. He beat some good Michigan teams, to his credit. Yeah. They both yeah. did. They both beat but some really good Michigan Rod, teams. he had some Rich Rod. He had some Hoke. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so so Day's getting a little heavier in Michigan. It's not the same. This is this is a really good Michigan team compared to what they've been for 25 years. These This for this. Last three yeah. versions of them have been really good. I, that's definitely you fair. Got the Stallions thing in there. Does it count? Does it matter? Like, you know, say two years ago, Michigan bullied them, ran all over them in the snow. Give them that one. Last year, stuff in the, another game like this season, they shut them down the first half, rushing the ball. Mm-hmm. They played really good defense. Couldn't get in cooking on offense. Kind of like we're stalemated at the half. Um, you know, I don't want to offer the guy too many excuses because he has to beat Michigan. You have to beat Michigan here. You can't lose three, four, five in a row to Michigan. You can't do it. But at the same time, like it's not the same stuff that Cooper had. It just drives me nuts to hear fans call mm-hmm. him John, John Cooper. Yeah, you're like, just saying you don't know college yeah. football. You don't know college football history <laughs> if you say that. You just don't. Uh, the topic of one and six against top five. I mean, in a perfect world, you're three and four or four and three in those games. Would you? Would you? Would you accept that? Oh yeah, yeah. I think a you're, really you're good coach. Five hundred in those. Yeah, four and three, three and four yeah. against top five opponents. Yeah, I mean. saving maybe better than that, but yeah, most folks. I, so I you got two Michigan cheating teams in there, two che- two cheating Michigan teams in there, and then the game Saturday should have won that they dominated most of the scorecard except for you know turnovers, some special team stuff like punt distance, and you know, I give you the cheating years, but they lost Saturday. I mean, there wasn't anything dirty about that. They they just lost. Okay. Lost the game to Clemson. Maybe they shouldn't have. And, and you know, we're not pinning that on day, are we? That the receiver ran the wrong route at the end of that game, or the fumble that should count as a fumble didn't count as a fumble. I, I think Lock, in a vacuum, you don't with one game. You just look at the collective, right? And say, lost hey, a Georgia team. Are you winning those that, games, or are you not? More often than not, you gave the Georgia team that's won two straight Natties or second their best game in, mm-hmm. in twenty four months. You lost to an Alabama team that was absolutely loaded that COVID year. That team was ridiculous. So. You know, a, a lot of times you, you hear that one and five mark, and it's like playing against four team, number three team, number five team. They played one, one, two. They played some really, really, mm-hmm. really good teams here. That Clemson team they lost to was two. Bama was one. Georgia was one. Michigan was three and two, depending on the year. Three, I think three of the last two years. So it, it, they're top three teams. And, you know, he's got to fix it. He's got to fix this Michigan problem. I'm 100% with you there, but I'll, I'll – I'll have his back a little bit, man. Like the guy tries. Like he ran. Shiano got out of town. He, he he upgraded Kerry Combs. He's like, I need to win this game. He knows he needs to win the game. He's mm-hmm. not just like, oh, I'm not from here. I don't get it. Do you see Harbaugh too after the game the other day? Said that uh, some of the hates contrived. Like I hate. That's the worst part about them winning. He can say whatever he wants. Well, if they got the microphone, and said the hate was contrived. Like people mm-hmm. would, would burn his house down. Yeah, they would, well, go, they would go nuts. On Harbaugh's just, you know, you know, you can't take what he says as much. You know, he's saying that at the same time that Roman Wilson after the game is talking about how soft Ohio State is and just, you know, yeah. waving yeah. the, you know, waving Ohio State into the tunnel. Like, just embrace what it is. Don't pretend yeah. it's something else. That's the worst part to me is you just got to sit here and kind of eat that stuff. Like, I saw the Jesse yeah. Minter video, their DC, when he's waving. And it's just like, I yeah. saw it. It made me mad, but like, what are you going to do? They won the game. Oh, that's, you know, their, that's their spoils. Yeah. yeah, there isn't much you can do. Uh, Kyle McCord, uh, fans want him fired. Not all, you know. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying we do. I'm just listing some of the people after the Michigan game that fans want fired. And we've gone through Dave. Now we're on Kyle. 
what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I think first year starter, obviously with the pedigree we've seen with some of the quarterbacks come through, Kyle did not measure up this year. I don't think that, uh, you know, he, he was behind a really good offensive line. Uh, but I do think there are things that, you know, he absolutely has to get better at. Um, he was more of a game man and you can win games that way, but I don't think that's really what Day's trying to do as a offensive mind is to just try to have his quarterback manage the game and not lose it. And I think right now against really good in a matchup games, that's really what you needed to expect from him or hope from him is that he wouldn't lose it more so than he would win it. I know the Notre Dame game, great drive, whatever, but I'm just honestly not convinced Notre Dame's that good. Um, for his third start, that was nice. That was great. Um, but, you know, some of these other games, Michigan included, I just I think you've got, you know, an issue where he's got to get faster at processing information so that he can get the ball out faster, reads faster, because he's clearly not going to get drastically more mobile. He's not going to be a runner. So if he's going to be a pocket guy, he's got to have better pocket presence, and he's just got to have better accuracy. I don't even care what his completion percentage is. Just too many balls, even that are complete, require non-standard catches uh, and or just eliminate any chance for yards after catch and you know kind of limit explosive plays, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think he can get better, um, but I think he needs to get better because him being this, if he's the starter next year and he turns in the same kind of performance, Ohio State fans are going to be disappointed at the end of the year again i do feel pretty confident in that yeah i think so I'm, i think that's all fair stuff you said i i think he'll get better though um i think he's never going to be like you know justin when he takes off and runs won't be that mm-hmm. guy but i think some of the 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 accuracy stuff is something you can definitely improve upon just mm-hmm. throwing lots of footballs get better at that uh progressions in in kind of awareness is something i think you can get better at too uh you, can, you know maybe it's a little bit of like an information overload for him right now where where he's having trouble scanning and processing everything that's going on. But Which kills his it, footwork, it, and that's why he's inaccurate. It does. He doesn't step into yeah. throws because he's not ready to make the throws because he hasn't read what the right throw is yet. Yeah, I think it's progression reads and some of the processing of information. But I think that's something you can get better at. You know, I'm not like mm-hmm. a psychologist. I don't know that. But to me, like, you don't play an instrument, right? Do not. I, I don't either. So we, we could see happy birthday on a music sheet and be like, whoa, that's way too much information. We're, we could also like practice for 10 years and then pick up like, I don't know what the hardest thing in the world, you know, to play is, whether it's Mozart or Beethoven and just one of their bangers and be like, look at how much more information is there, how much denser mm-hmm. the information is. But because of our experience and our practice, we can handle it. So I, I do think that's something you can get better at. Uh, do you think there's going to be a quarterback controversy next year? Or do you think it'll be like any kind of, Oh, Ryan Day's not naming the starter as he heads into camp, or do you think Kai will be the starter? Pretty much, all I think losses? that I think both. I think that I don't know about controversy. I don't know if that's the word, but I do think that um, Day is not going to fall all over himself to say that Kyle is his starter next year. I think he's going to go into spring ball into, into winter drills into spring ball, saying, "Hey, you know, Kyle played a lot of games and you know did a lot of good stuff for us, but I want to see what everybody's got, and we'll, you know, my job is to figure out who the starter." needs to be come fall camp kind of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes mm-hmm. that route, kind of like last year, but a little, I think even this year though, it kind of felt like McCord was leader in the clubhouse, right? The whole time. And then Brown got hurt at the end of spring that further reinforced it. And then there was that little period in fall camp where it felt like did Brown go ahead. Like that was kind of like the chirping, yeah. right? But I don't know that mm-hmm. that was ever really reality. Um, so I mm-hmm. think that, you know, next year will be kind of that on steroids, unless they bring someone else in, which I don't, have any reason to believe that they, you know, that they will, I think that he will, they will try to challenge McCord and not just give him the keys. And part of what you said to get better, hopefully is to feel some pressure. And quite frankly, I think you have to do that with him because under pressure, is where he struggles. I mean, like, you know, road games, it's a little easier to play at home than the road, right? 14 touchdowns, no interceptions. On the road, 10 touchdowns, six interceptions. Throws for about 45 yards less per game. Completion rates about six percentage points lower. I think some of that just feeds into not comfortable being on the road, right? Um, we, we know under pressure, that kind of stuff, like, meaning pressure from the defense, um, mm-hmm. he doesn't thrive, hasn't thrived yet consistently so to me the more pressure you can put on him to train him to be ready for that to hopefully thrive in it better go forward i think they would be crazy to say i'm not crazy i would not say oh that's absolutely my starter everybody you know quiet down you don't have to dog kyle out but you can say hey i want to see what everybody's got here right especially now that brown will have a full healthy supposedly camp to hopefully push him a little bit you interesting walk yeah an interesting walk you want to make sure that 
you don't shatter his confidence, Kyle's. Right. Yeah. But you also want to make sure you're picking the the right guy. And, and Day's super competitive, super competitive. Like, a, I mean, most of these guys are in this kind of position in life, but he's super competitive and he really, really cares about that one position more than any other position. Mm-hmm. So I'm with you. Right. I don't think he's just going to say, oh, you were my guy last year. You're guaranteed to be, you know, he wants it. He wants the best quarterback throwing the ball next year. And, you know, pretty good odds that's Kyle. But if it's not Kyle, I think they would be fine with that as well. Agree. Yeah. Uh, Knowles, okay with his performance. I know his name is getting mentioned for some uh, – I guess Duke's got an open job now mm-hmm, since A&M mm-hmm. went got Elko. Um, I, I think I, I think the team has bigger opportunities than Knowles. I guess I would mm-hmm. say that, right? Like I think the defense made some huge improvements. I think there was a key this year to can't give up big plays. Did they – overcorrect that maybe in a few spots possibly but i can certainly understand why they took that route right like it did feel like especially in that seven minute drive to get the field goal that you know didn't ice it but it's like okay now you have no timeouts in a minute and Mm -hmm. you got mccord on the road and you know michigan's gonna pin their ears you know it it was a little tricky right to think you're gonna get a touchdown there if they could have held them made them punt and you only need a field goal could have been a totally different deal, but to give up a seven minute drive there and really never really get the safeties down and mm-hmm. I, you, you can't let them go third where they run 13 plays. It was only for 56 yards, but it was enough to get in field goal range and chew up seven minutes. I mean, that that's, that's tough. I think even before that, you know, we, we had, uh, you and I had just talked separately about, you know, it was 17 all high state. You think they, all right, momentum is swinging here. High State mm-hmm. ties it up at 17. They've been chasing the whole game. Defense goes on the field, boom, seven plays, 75 yards, 24-17 Michigan. Like, that can't happen right there, right? One of those two drives cannot, you know, it can't end up in 10 points there. Um, but overall, I think Knowles, I think the defense made a lot of, you know, made a lot of progress this year. In the Michigan game specifically, though, just you saw the snap counts, like, that last drive when you're really struggling to stop the run, but it's the same defensive line that's played the entire game. Basically like I'm just surprised they abandoned some of the stuff that got them there in that last game. But uh, I mean, uh, I'm not pushing Knowles to Duke. I feel like the defense made a lot of good strides this year and I wouldn't, they were elite. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if we're talking about list, the assistant coaches or the coordinators, you'd like to see change for next year. Knowles Knowles isn't in the, you know, the opening salvo there. I agree. I, I think that he and he and Day are scarred a little bit by Michigan. Yeah, and and, and maybe that's why he he was reluctant to dial anything up yeah. on that on those I drives think so. because you know last year in Columbus it wasn't fun when they dialed stuff up and I mean how much they missed Lathan Ransom. Sonny is going to be a superstar, but man, just a little little more seasoning back there. I mean the one play yeah. after Zender got hurt and went out and. Yeah, uh, and, that was and, a combo. Steele yeah. did not go into the right gap, and then yeah, it really left Sonny to make a play, and that was not a great, uh, not, not a great him. try to tackle there. I think the linebackers killed him in that game too, though. I saw Steele had a tough day, tackles, man. but and Tommy what was one armed. What do you do? He definitely he's definitely one-armed. injured. He's got, he's got one arm. He's banged up. Been out. What do you like do though? You know, out. he wants to be there more than life, right? Like, he probably will. You know, walk by your office and stare you down unless you put him in that game and say he's going to play. You make $2 million a year to put your team in the best position to win. I assume Knowles thought, I hope that he thought more that Eichenberg gave him a better chance to win than he thought, oh, Tommy's earned the right to play because you're responsible for the whole defense. You're not responsible for one guy. Right. And Cody Simon had played well. So yeah, yeah. I just, I, I think you at least needed to try that a little bit more because it, no, Tommy can be great. You're hurt. Like literally one arm. He's trying to tackle guys with one arm in some cases. And it just wasn't working beyond just the coverage. And and that's where it gets a little tougher too, is because it's not like Simon is great in pass coverage. The tight ends right. were hurting Ohio state. They, they did, the linebackers man. had a lot of space to cover and Michigan has good tight ends. And it wasn't the first time this year that Michigan was dialing up some of those plays. Like they're, yeah. they're proficient at using their tight ends. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. They, they, you know, McCarthy didn't deal on them to the tune of 400 yards, but 80%, no turnovers, very efficient. Mm -hmm. We, we, we talked on the radio a lot. Harbaugh had that one quote that it was actually the only cool thing he's ever said in his life that, you know, your job (laughs) as a coach is to be the guardian of the win, the W. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was a lot of what JJ was in this game. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we, good thing we have what we have. Chris, we got about, uh, 11 and a half months here, 11, three quarters of a month to, uh, kind of think about and talk about this game some more. So I'm sure we'll, we'll circle back on this. Uh, uh, Orange Bowl, a lot of people have Ohio State, Louisville on that one. Can you think of a game that you were any less hyped to watch? 
<laughs> like it would have to be like Ohio yeah. State, Toledo, and in, in like the yeah. glass ball. I was gonna say, I think it's just some of these non, you know, some of this non-conference stuff in September is probably, but at least then you have the newness of the season, right? It's kind of those mm-hmm. game three home Youngstown states. Those are those are probably worse, but um, well, you know, well, at Ohio, least your starters play at least because yeah, there, there's right, gonna be six right. guys sitting this game out if, if Ohio State doesn't make the CFP. Yeah, you know, silver lining of that though is if they don't make the CFP, I mean, the season is is over anyway, right? So you're down to an exhibition. So to me just kind of kind of like the Rose Bowl uh, a couple years ago it's like well okay let's see some like I'm kind of glad those guys are sitting out one for their future they should sit out but two Mm -hmm. let's get a springboard right let's see what we got for next year we've seen before in bowl practices guys step up get some extra reps whether they step up in that game or it's a springboard you know into spring ball knowing they're going to play a bigger role next year Um, I'd love to see Tate and Ennis, just like we saw in the Rose Bowl, right? Seeing you know, seeing those guys, like Marvin, play a bunch. Um, I think that would be great, especially knowing that, again, assuming that McCord's most likely going to be your quarterback, then start that, you know, start that now. Get as much of that run as you can and get a jump start on next year. So I, I don't know. Maybe that's the, the rare uh, case of me being, you know, an optimist or whatever, but I think you've got to camp, you've got to capitalize on. Yeah, I understand there won't be a ton of excitement to play a Louisville and an Orange Bowl or whatever it may be, but that doesn't mean it's not a great opportunity for guys that are going to have roles much bigger than they had this year. Hey, that starts now kind of thing. And I think that's something the team that will be here next year should, you know, absolutely be rallying around. Yeah, well said. I, I just, it, it, it strikes me as a game that is a no win game like you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Louisville. Remember uh, mm-hmm. when Coop lost Air Force way, way back in the day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was just it was Ball, one of those right? games, right? One of those games. I'm like um, Nashville or wherever the hell it was. Yeah. It was, uh, was it Music City? I think no, it was no, no, no. It was, it was the Liberty. Liberty. Bowl, Liberty. Wherever Liberty. that's at. Yeah. Liberty. Was it in Memphis or? That's, a, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Good that's times. how bad it is. Like, who right. knows? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, speaking of, last thing on this game, next year there's a 12 team playoff. And that expansion, obviously, I thought of it because, like, we're talking about the guys sitting out of bowl games. And that was becoming, like, an epidemic in college football. Yeah. So they're like, hey, let's expand the playoff because they're trying to get ahead of that, too. And some more guys will play when that expands. That makes sense. Uh, but also, you know, takes a little bit of pressure off a of day. And guys like James Franklin and even Harbaugh, if he were to lose today or, you know, uh, less, you know, I said less miles. Brian Kelly, uh, guy, guys that are really close but aren't going to win their, you know, they have shots now and it, it kind of stinks in the sense. This is the last all, all, all or nothing Michigan game. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I mean, last year it worked out. It could still work out this year, but chances are it's not a high state's going to go to some random bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there'll be opportunities in the future where there'll be a regular season, Michigan game. And there might be a big 10 championship game against yeah, them rematch one week, week later where, yeah. Okay, now you're definitely playing for a one seed, or if the other team wins, you may drop to two and they're three or whatever it goes, you know. So, kind of hurts, man, losing this last one like this. It does. To me, the biggest thing of all to make sure it doesn't get compromised too much is just still keeping it at the end of the season. Um, so that you have a season of stakes to build up to understand mm-hmm. what it's truly about versus if it's in October or whatever. Like it could be inflated at that point, I guess, to be like, oh, there is a lot at stake here, but you need it to be kind of, you know, hopefully still be at the end of the regular season and to play them in back to back weeks. That won't happen very often, I don't think, in this new Big Ten. I mean, it will happen. You're, I don't well, think it's you're right. It's going to happen like every year. The 14 um, team Big Ten, it would happen a lot. The 18, probably not yeah, as much. Yeah, right, right, right. So when that happens, to me, that will. That won't hurt the rivalry. That won't enhance it. You're right, though, as far as the like the overall like, you know, do or die type stakes. That does stink a little bit. But I just I, a rivalry is always going to be you know it's it's always going to be huge. Um, and I, to me, it's it's a trade off that you're willing to make to have a you know an expanded playoff. We've talked about I prefer six or eight over twelve, but either way, I think more than four, you know, needed to happen. And if this is I mean, when I say a casualty, but if it's you know, decreased even a little bit, I think it's worth it in the grand scheme for the, for the sport. And even even as an Ohio State fan, I mean, I want to beat Michigan, but I want to win national titles more than I want to do anything. I know that's yeah. blasphemy to some people, but I just I don't agree with. Oh, I don't care if we go one and eleven as long as we beat Michigan. No. To me, that is just contrived, right? It's like different. That's, yeah, it's that's different what your grandpa days. told you to think, but that doesn't make it smart. Kirby's first natty they lost to Alabama, and then they won it. Right. So, yeah. There's Did they no not way. hang a banner. Did exactly. they, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're on. still, they're still going for their third straight. They're not saying, yeah. well, that first one doesn't yeah. count. 
uh, we'll have to see what shakes loose, man. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun when we get there. And can you imagine though the one the first time OSU and Michigan does meet in the Big Ten championship in Indy, they have to, like a rematch. Is oh, it gonna be man. like Anchorman where the two sets of fans are like under that overpass right by Lucas Oil, just stabbing <laughs> each other with tridents and like. I, I'm worried about bringing those fan bases together for like 48 hours. Like I think it's yeah, going to uh, yeah. get pretty wild. But uh, Well, you know, that vitriol's contrived. Just ask Harbaugh. <laughs> sure is, Jim. Sure is. Yeah, he made some some fun news with that. Hey, thanks for joining us. We, do, we don't know what we're doing yet. We're going to have some fun with this show. Um, and we don't know the format or what days it'll be out, but we're going to do it as often as we can and, and try to maybe take some of the stuff we did with the radio and, and make it a little better. Um, but really appreciate your time. Chris, am I forgetting anything or you want to shout out anyone? No, I think we're good. Time at the radio was great, like you said. Interested to see where we can do this. I would imagine, you know, we did the radio show weekly, so I think we'll be in some range there. I, I like the fact that we can do, you know, one-off short little things if something pops, big news yeah. or whatever. Hey, let's pop on and talk about it kind of thing. Uh, a little easier to do. Um, not having a dedicated slot and not having to drive to the studio or radio gig was great. But, you know, selfishly, I'm looking forward to this and uh, yeah, not just for um, convenience, but for cadence and things like that as well. So, yeah, look forward to it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for much more coming your way. I'm Jason Priestess. He's Chris Lauderack. Have a good one.